What's up, design family, and welcome back to FitBite, the mini series on the Fit Design podcast where we take bite sized pieces of the Fit Design content you love and distill them down for you into easy to understand bite sized portions. On today's episode, we'll be looking at the ultimate fashion brand building guide. Whether you're a sportswear designer, activewear designer, or a regular fashion designer, chances are you've been tasked with the challenge of building a brand that can resonate with your target group. On this quick episode, we'll be going through the eight elements required to build a successful brand and what are the mechanisms that you can employ to build a strong brand that will stand the test of time. When looking at building a brand, we have to consider both internal and external factors. Building a brand can be vague and challenging, but every great brand was built through years and years of hard work. So where does one start? Well, we'll start internally. Start off with your brand story. Look at using a real person. The history and background of the founder of a brand can be a great way to create an emotional connection with your customers. This is a significant way that you can build a loyal customer base. At the same time, be clear about the reasons to start. So why have you started your brand? Is it to help someone? Is it to reach out to a certain cause? What is it? Highlight that and communicate it in your mission. Understand what the purpose is and be consistent in the ways in which you communicate that to your customers. While this note necessarily spikes sales right away, this is a great way to build credibility. Next, we'll need to look at how you build your brand value. Be clear in your direction. Clear and specific core values will help your brand develop over time. You need to be consistent and you need to understand that building a clear image in your customers' minds of what you represent is, above all, the most important factor. Also, look at constantly reviewing your brand values. You should be constantly revisiting the core values that create your brand and make sure that you stick with them. Ask yourself periodically. Am I working towards a brand that I can identify with? Are these actions pushing me closer to the brand that I'm trying to create or are they distancing me apart? Look at yourself as a growing company. You may need to update these brand values over time. However, this should be gradual and it should make sense. Most important of all, you should always identify your USP or your unique selling point. This will serve two key features. Number one is it will allow you to differentiate yourself in a saturated market. Knowing what makes you different from your competitors will give you the edge when it comes to acquiring customers. Your customers want to come to you for a specific type of service or a specific product that no one else offers. Identifying your USP and convincing your customers as to why they should be looking to you exclusively for certain products or services is a great way to set yourself apart. Next, keep yourself on track. Identifying your USP will allow you to clarify which products or services that you should focus on and which ones are not worth the time. Focus on the USPs because those will give you the consistent edge you need to keep growing. It's important for your brand to have a point of view. So what does this mean? It means that you should have a voice. Sharing an attitude or a point of view about a topic that that is not directly related to your line of business can create a more approachable feel to your brand. Customers want to know that the brands that they are giving their hard-earned money to have views that align with their own. At the same time, have a clear standpoint. Be careful about how you deliver your messages but also make sure that your delivery and the points of view of your staff, your spokespeople, the influencers you work with align with yours. There's no point in being anti something and then hiring out an influencer that is the opposite of what you're preaching. That just seems hypocritical and can work against you. Be consistent with your brand positioning. When it comes to brand positioning, start off with a perceptual map. Perceptual map has two axes, the Y axis, which goes from the price, high price to low price, and then the X axis, which goes from the low quality to the high quality. 
brand positioning will allow you to show how you stand amongst your competitors. And it gives you a way to see how your customers view you amongst the other brands on the market. Make sure that your brand positioning affects your decisions. So how you position your brand is going to be key in terms of how you price yourself and how you make your marketing decisions. So if you're a high quality, high priced brand, chances are you're not looking to flood the market with your products. You wanna maintain an air of exclusivity. However, if you're a low quality, low price, you may wanna be going based off of volume. Both are different approaches and there's neither one that's correct. Just be consistent in how you position yourself. It's extremely important to target customers. At the beginning of any brand's journey, it can be quite tempting to target anyone within buying age, but that can work against you. Decide who to sell to. This is one of the core questions that you need to answer when starting a business. Understand that selling to everyone is counterproductive. Build a niche and become really good at specific product types and monitor your customers. If you know your customers well, you can continuously tailor products. That's why studying your customers, researching their spending habits, their lifestyles, their likes, dislikes, and needs will give you the proper tools needed to create products that they're going to love. Now that we've discussed all the internal ways that you can help build brand equity, we'll look at some of the external ways. Number one is to create a visual identity. Visual identity is key in terms of how people externally view your brand. You need to create a remarkable experience. A bold visual identity makes you instantly recognizable to customers and it helps to complete their shopping experience. At the same time, make sure that you pick a visual identity that fits your style. So whether it's your logo, your typography, your brand colors or packaging. Everything should read homogeneously. Nothing should be an afterthought and everything should fit within this story that you're trying to tell. You'll also need to consider the right tone of voice. Choosing the right tone of voice is one of the most underestimated considerations. Being consistent in your tone and being on point will help conjure emotions and create a brand personality. Though your customers may not always remember the visual look of a product, they'll definitely remember how they felt when they purchased your product. At the same time, align your tone. When it comes to your advertising or your website and everything in between, make sure that everything has a consistent and singularly delivered message. Don't confuse your customers. Be clear about what you stand for. You just listened to the FitBite on the ultimate fashion brand building guide. We've discussed both internal and external ways to build a strong brand identity. If you guys enjoyed this FitBite, please consider leaving a review below. Your feedback means the world to us and it allows us to keep getting better. Thank you once again for tuning in to this episode of FitBite. Until next week, stay awesome.